Hello everyone, today I have a great pleasure to introduce our new member, Sarah D. Lane, and she's a personal brand strategist and self-leadership mentor. Hi, Sarah, it's a great pleasure to have you in our community. Thank you for arranging your time. Yes, thank you. I'm very excited to, um, I'm excited to geek out with you on personal branding. (laughs) (laughs) You know a few things about this. So um, yeah, I'm happy to connect um, and I look forward to, yeah, just a fun conversation with you. I have been in... Oh, the space of personal transformational leadership um, and, you know, branding, creating my own business, all of that. So combined, I have about 27 years experience as an entrepreneur, growing, building all of those things. So I know I know a few things. I know a few things. Done a lot of things wrong. (laughs) Done a lot of things right. (laughs) Um, and I always love sharing my, you know, my mistakes and my successes. So yes, I love talking about personal branding. Um, I love talking about archetypes, psychology, mm-hmm. really diving into that and then really supporting people in growing their online platforms and their businesses and, you know, being able to really create that foundation for freedom for themselves. Okay, I'm very curious, uh, what brought you in this area? Uh, is that was something you were always thinking about or you had some different background before? So how did you start uh, thinking and execute this uh, personal branding strategies for your clients and community? Yes, thank you. Um, no, I, I actually started as, well, my first experience of being an entrepreneur, uh, I started at 13, so started my journey very early. Mm-hmm. I was a successful actress in the entertainment industry, so got to do wonderful things. That was really my foundation in understanding psychology, um, mm-hmm. archetypes, character building, but really understanding self. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you like you are the brand. So really understanding how personal branding works in one industry uh and to be honest my industry i i i at the time i was so innocent right young girl like i i didn't go to school for anything else i was working consistently and so in a way i was having almost like i was looking at my life through this keyhole of thinking oh this is the everything that i will be this will be my journey right um, and then as many things do in life in business uh screeching halt my industry changed and I couldn't get hired for anything. So many different things changed with that. I was going through my own personal experiences as well. And I reached this point where it was probably the, I would mean, I was scared. I felt lost. And at the same time, honestly, I felt stupid. That was a big thing that came up for me at that time because, because I didn't know how to do anything else. I didn't learn, I didn't go to college, I didn't learn, I knew nothing about traditional business sense, right? I knew you are you are the product. I knew how to do all those things. I had talents, but it wasn't, um, when you can't get hired as something that you've been in since you were young, and then having no education, formal education for anything else, I, I realized I needed to, it just, it didn't feel safe. And, and I never want another woman to feel like she doesn't know, she doesn't have the tools in order to create freedom for herself and financial stability for herself. And that was, I realized that I didn't have that and that was scary. So that sort of detoured a whole trajectory on my journey. And from today's perspective when you're looking on that time and you faced uh, that you cannot find a job in the industry where which is what which was your life and all experience you had and you didn't have skills or anything else do you think uh, from this experience you have now that's actually a really bad thing or maybe it's time when what we all need to kind of face in order to start working on what we really uh, want and have talent for that's such a good question. I mean, so it's easier to say in hindsight, right? Everything's a blessing in hindsight. You're like, oh, I learned so much. Um, and that was a, a detour. And sometimes it feels like something higher than you is, is you know, changing the trajectory of your life. 
Um, at the time, that is not how I felt. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I ask um, you from no. today's perspective, of course. Yeah. Perspective, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. Um, at the time, I was scared out of my mind. <laughs> um, but yes, I. It was sort of one of those feelings um, that, and I and I always remember this, you know. And it was something that my mom said to me at the time, because when when I didn't know how to do anything and I put myself yes on that journey like that's the choice that we always get to have it's like are you going to fall into what you don't have or are you going to take the journey of change and transformation within yourself that ultimately leads you into a path of growth we all have that choice and um I was talking with my mom at the time I mean I was 27 I think when this was all really happening and I was so scared and it felt like a, almost like the bird being pushed out of the nest, you mm. know, which can feel really scary. But then at the time I was like, well, what if, what if I don't have any ground underneath me? What if I, what if I don't hit, like, what if I don't, <laughs> what if I fail? What if I don't build something that actually works? Like so many what ifs mm. that were of fear and self-doubt and unknown, just uncertainty. And I will never forget because my mom was always like, why are you worried about ground underneath you? Like they named me after a seraphim, which is an angel. And so she's like, why are you worried about the ground underneath you? She's like, we named you, you have wings to fly no matter what you do in life. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, like I just, and it like, it always gets me every, <laughs> every time because I remember that often times we're always gonna hit a plateau, which is gonna make us feel like we're at the bottom of a new level. And it's gonna push us into our next journey. And it's gonna feel like you're being pushed out of the nest. And it's gonna feel like you don't know if there's gonna be any ground underneath you like at all. And you don't know what's gonna happen and industries change. Mm -hmm. And yet if we remember that like we are our own strength and that you will always find your wings on the way down and you're never falling, you're just, riding the wind <laughs> that was the reframe so yeah in hindsight i think it was a blessing it's totally changed the transition of my my whole life and my career and i wouldn't take that back for anything i do more helping empower women especially in their businesses and creating foundation for themselves than than i did feeling like i was suppressed and and objectified as a woman in the in the entertainment industry to be quite honest so as much money as i was making there i make more money now empowering women mm -hmm. so i'm grateful <laughs> but yes i had to go through a journey of first finding myself and then building something i was proud of building something that made me feel like I built something from the ground up without knowing any tools. Mm -hmm. And so if I can do it, then I know any woman can do that. And it's m my pleasure and purpose to help women and ambitious women who want to be able to do that for themselves. Wow. Uh, such impressive uh, transition from, from the place where you used to be, at, you were 27 at that time, and, and uh, someone who is unsecure and don't know what future will bring to you. And what was that which made you think that you somehow can make it is you find somebody who support you uh did you even care what other people think so uh, i'm just curious what actually helped you to overcome that moment of fear and uh when you don't have self-confidence and when you don't feel that you can make it and that you will uh, just live desperate life and and that's the critical point which many entrepreneurs face and not only entrepreneurs i think every human being faced and then we take different directions but in your case what was that something which you found can support you and help you to be uh the person who you are today i really appreciate you asking that question because it, it it is such a journey and it's it's always different for everybody but i agree with you like we can hear all the success stories we want you know like people want to know the success i had go to my website, go see, you know, like go look up all, wait, yay, the highlights. But it's really like, let's let's just get to the, the, the grit of like, mm -hmm. <laughs> what gets you to that? Mm -hmm. um, so I so appreciate that question. Cause to me, that's, that's real, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so here's what I can say. I didn't do it alone. Um, it felt a lot of times I felt like I was alone. Um, I did have to, 
seek out mentors. And it is, it's truly is so cliche, but it's like when the student, I don't want to say when the student's ready, it's when the student's asking. Mm -hmm. I may not have felt like I was ready, but I was asking. I didn't have the answers and I was actively seeking. So the energy, I follow always a lot, right? Very, very intuitive and very like following the energy. And so to me, the pull was to seek the information, actively going towards like a future. I didn't want to look at the things, the challenges of my past anymore. I really took on, okay, that's not going to help me back there. Even where I'm standing right now won't help me. I need information that's going to help me get from where I currently am in my present into my future. So I had to shift my focus. And then I had to actively ask for information, teacher. <laughs> and it came in so many forms, right? So I, I very much, you know, it could be a song that is inspiring on the radio. And I would follow that. Oftentimes I would ask and it would be um, two steps to the next thing. What I mean by that is, if it's not the one thing immediate, then if you're a yes um, perspective, then you're always going to take the next best step that's ultimately gonna lead you to whoever, whoever that is for you. So yes, I was an active yes person. I was seeking and I found mentors. Um, all the information that I didn't know, right? How to build the business, even, even diving into you know the understanding of deep subconscious work that I love to teach. I sought out specific, I didn't know what it was, but I was like, I have this feeling. And then the, the teachers ended up showing up. So to me, I wasn't resisting change. I was leaning in. My, my dad would teach me how to drive by putting me in a go-kart when I was 16. And one of the things when you're going around a corner, right? You can kind of put on the brakes a little bit, but then you don't lean against the corner, like you lean into the corner. Mm -hmm. And if you lean into the corner just the right amount, then you can like hit the gas and you can keep going faster around the corner. So that's always been a, a principle of whenever you hit a corner, like you lean into it, you lean against it and you're gonna create more resistance. So I believe those that leap, those that allow for leaning in to change, those become leaders, those become the innovators. And when we can do that, and those, the more that we have people leaning in and stepping into that, the more that that's gonna ripple out to all future generations. So that was sort of the perspective that I had. Um, and yeah, found people to help me. You, you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> there was, a, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> I can say it was very intuitive, but I still had to learn uh, tangible, practical, you know, and that I bring into even the things that I teach. I wanted techniques that would create tangible behavioral change in myself. I didn't want airy, fairy, fluffy, like, don't tell me to write it in a journal. Like I'm, I'm good. I don't need to write in a journal. Trust me. You don't want to read what's in the journal right now. You know what I mean? Like write down what's positive, like to a certain extent that can be bypassing. For me, right? I wanted something I could like put my like energy into and then put into practice. But that was what I was actively seeking. Also on this journey, somehow fall in love in psychology. How you know to put it into practice. Yeah. Like you can have the like even in uh, branding when we talk about the archetypes, right? We understand that this is our um they're parts of our consciousness, right? They're collective, um, they're aspects of mm. us that we connect to. They're all collective consciousness. Oh, yes. That's wonderful, conceptually. How do we then take that concept of something we can't see? It's somewhere, it's somewhere in there, mm -hmm. right? Somewhere way back here in our subconscious mind. How do we pull that out and then actually put that into great, how am I going to use that as a tool to not only change my behavior so that I can reach higher states of whether it's consciousness or whether I want to change my behavior so I can get out of my own way and imposter syndrome and self-doubt doesn't keep me looping and negative behavior. 
-hmm. Or how do I apply that into my business? So then I can be seen more as a leader so that then I can actually be attracting and being a vibrational match to those people that I really want to work with. That's the difference. Everything's conceptual until you put it into a strategy. So I like taking concepts and mm -hmm. un like things that um, are maybe sometimes harder for people to understand or complicated and then putting them into organized structures and strategies that you can use for your own personal development and then your business growth and development. Even when I'm teaching business stuff and people are like, give me the strategy and like, help me organize, right? And all this stuff. And I'm like, that's wonderful. But we need to find your persona, like the foundation of who you're being or who you need to be, not just for the people that you want to support, not just for you to access your future, right? The, right? the every next level of um, growth is going to require another level of you, right? We've heard this a thousand times. So it's finding, not fabricating a persona that you can use some of the archetypes, right? As an aspect to discover those parts of you. Um, and then like acting, like actors create characters mm -hmm. that are, that stem from collective consciousness. You're not faking something, right? So you can tap into who that version of you is that you need to become um, mm -hmm. and more embody that, right? Then we have to go through a process of integration so that it doesn't create an imposter syndrome between, right? There's this future aspect of you, this etheric right? And then there's the version that you think that you are now. So you collapse those um, identities. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I really want to uh, kind of emphasize is the importance of, um, and it's a lot in the, the work that I do in my Profitable Personal Brand Academy, is when you can identify, or I should say the importance of identifying the persona first, right? So there's three phases, the, the persona, then there is um, your presence, and then there's profitability, right? Making whatever it is into a profit. Persona is first because we identify the archetypes that you need to be, that is, you know, for those that are very intuitive, I can say, you know, your sole purpose, those who are very intellectual, maybe it's, you know, your uh, legacy self, something like that, you know, your, your destiny. Mm -hmm. And making that identity separate than the archetypes that you're working with that are either your client archetypes or who you need to be in your business. The reason why that's so important is making sure that I mean, entre being an entrepreneur, like you got to make sure that your mental health is <laughs> on point. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a journey of self-discovery and you want to make sure that you're, you're healthy in doing that because there can be a lot of stress that can make you feel like you're going crazy. Um, and so your, your purpose, your sole purpose is different than the, um, the part that you make money with. And those archetypes need to be defined separately so that so that you don't have an identity crisis, so that you don't put your sole purpose value on the, the determination of, of whether your business succeeds or fails, then it doesn't mean anything about your purpose and your, your sole um, purpose. <laughs> I think your prof Profitable Personal Branding Academy is the place where people can um, definitely learn more about your, uh, your uh, strategy, your uh, methodology, and I think it's great that you combine those two, like entertainment and psychology. Thank you so much for this uh, for this uh, uh, storytelling and for sharing your experience, your your um, the way how you find yourself in a difficult position and the, and the way how you uh, overcome those. Th and then that you are now um, running very successful business and helping other, uh, especially women uh, who want to be a leader, as 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 yourself. Thank you, uh, and I invite all people uh, to check uh, the social media uh, links and uh, all materials where you can uh, follow Sarah. And she's in our community, so if you if you want, please be free to reach out to her. And if you like the video, please push that button, subscribe, and uh, make us comments. Sarah, thank you so much. I really enjoy, it and it's it's a great honor and pleasure to have you in our group. Thank you. I love what you're doing and I just acknowledge you and honor you and appreciate you for creating the space so that um, everyone, but especially um, women can have a voice to sharing their gifts. I think it's so important and I really, really appreciate it. So thank you so much for having me. It's been a great joy. Thank you.